What's up, Call of Duty fans? Welcome back to Checkmate Gaming and our edition of Power Rankings leading up to the CDL Minnesota Home Series weekend. A lot of action from the Seattle weekend, which really kind of tossed some consideration in favor of a number of teams that were sitting near the bottom of the pack, where maybe some of the ones in the middle of the pack have now significantly fallen down. And what about Chicago? They didn't have a chance to play up against Atlanta or Dallas. They won the Home Series. Do they bump up at all? We'll find out as we dig into this episode of Power Ranking, starting at the very bottom and a new team in the number 12 position as I've officially moved the Seattle Surge to dead last from their 11th spot previously. Here's the simple way of looking at Seattle Surge. They have no idea what's going on. They have no idea who they want to play. They spent the last couple of weeks talking about the fact that Enable was going to start, but then Pander was playing in Search and Destroy, and based on his tweets, he didn't even realize he was going to be playing until a couple of days before, and that only lasted a total of one day. The second day through, Enable, not going to be starting anymore, as Pander was put right back into the mix, and it saw, I won't even say mixed results, it was the same results as before. Two 1-3 losses to both New York and the Los Angeles Gorillas, and to be frank, not a lot of the games were all that close. The only map that they were able to take were the domination maps, both against New York and Seattle, both of them relatively close. But you take a look at this team specifically and where they kind of stand, it's not good. You really can't say much positive about the Seattle Surge squad. They're sit 11th in hardpoint with a minus 15 point differential average. On top of that, their Surge and Destroy has gone from bad to a little bit worse as they dropped from 1.42 rounds on average that they lose by to 1.62. Not a good weekend for them in the Surge and Destroy after they had came through the week previously when they were in Chicago and actually had a really solid weekend when it came to the Surge and Destroy. So a negative depreciation there. But the one good thing about Seattle is that they're actually really good at domination. They sit third in the league. The differential in points is not much, but their win percentage is incredible. And that's actually a boost from where they were previously at fourth. So for Seattle, you got to figure out what we're doing on hard point and Surge. Your domination has still been relatively consistent and it doesn't seem to make a difference who necessarily is playing they're doing well at understanding the game type but being this bad at hard point and being this bad at search and destroy and not knowing who your full five is going to be is definitely concerning and why i had them in the 12th spot and with that of course moving into the 11th spot is the los angeles gorillas and candidly speaking they did not have as bad of a weekend as i think a lot of people are kind of throwing out there they had a couple of wins in hard point they went three and three in the mode overall they stayed good in the search and destroy they only dropped one map and that was versus london on petro a 3-6 loss there and yes they dropped all of their domination maps again but the good news was the differentials were plausible that they could have either came back or potentially won some of these maps and as you take a look at this team specifically in their stat lines again not good overall in the hard point or in the domination 12th in both of those categories but the good news is the differentials have actually gone up from last week to this week and beyond that their search and destroy they stay in fifth but they flip a negative differential into a positive one this week again showcasing that their search and destroy is are actually really strong it just comes down to can we get these guys on the same page to play well on the response you need an analyst you need someone who can just look at these maps break down things these are the right calls these are the wrong calls can you guys find a way to get an IGL to make the right decisions in the right times that's what I'm looking at if somebody on this LAG squad can step up and become a noteworthy IGL this team has an opportunity to keep going up the ranks. I honestly believe that because, again, they're not being outslayed all that heavily. The maps that they're losing in hardpoint are by about a hill, maybe a little bit more. And that's not bad considering that you went 191 to 250 and 187 to 250 versus a very good New York Subliners team. That just, for me, comes down to simple decision-making. If you make one more good decision, you win those maps. So that's kind of what we're looking for at LA if they want to get more improvement in the wings. Going up to my 10th spot, I've got the Paris Legion. A little bit of a drop for the Paris Legion as they weren't able to find a way to win this weekend as they played both Chicago and Optic. They were able to take one map away from each of these guys, and beyond that, the hard point stayed relatively close all the way through. The problems were the search and destroy, and how many times, if you've been watching this channel, you might already have account for it how many times have i talked about this paris legion team having good starts to search but can't close them out that's been the storyline now for the last two weeks if not more than that as you take a look at their statistics they're ninth in the hard point not a great differential in points right there eighth in the search and destroy not the worst case again you, you see that they're ranked eighth in search with only a minus 0.7 differential 
It's their win percentage. They only win 45% of their search and destroys that they play. That's not that great. And again, right in the middle of the road is their domination at 8th with minus 11.5 points on average, which again is not great as terms of uh, in terms of overall differentials that we currently see in the league. So Paris takes a little bit of a small hit. Toronto's next up for me here. And Toronto, yeah, they didn't play this last weekend, but they're going into a weekend upcoming where they have to be able to get through into playoffs if they want to move up the rankings in my mind. They play the Los Angeles Gorillas first, and then they get likely the winner of Chicago and Florida. Or I guess, honestly, beyond that, there is a plausible world where they very well could lose versus Los Angeles, and then they would have to still play either Florida or Chicago in some instance. So this is a weekend where Toronto has to be good. You take a look at their statistics going forward. They're 10th in the hard point, 9th in the domination. That's been their weak point through and through this entire season. They've been a pretty solid search and destroy team. They have a positive differential. They're, half, they're right in the middle of the league, but it's their respawn that's been suffering lately. And that's kind of echoed as far as what happened up until we got to Florida. When we last saw them in Florida, they actually looked pretty darn good. They went 3-3 three and three in the hard point, but they went a flawless 3-0 and in the domination. Their three wins they found in Dom, that matches their wins that they had all year previously in that mode specifically. So there's some work that needs to be done still for these guys, but at the end of the day, they're getting better. And if they can continue to progress in the respawn, there is a possibility this Toronto team could be the number two team out of Group B coming up in Minnesota here in the near future. It, again, positive exchanges from Florida. It's all I have to say. It just comes down to can they keep that trend up without suffering anything in their search and destroy. Going to my number eight spot, a little bit of a boost here for the London Royal Ravens, really kind of right back where they were before I had dropped them down. The good news for London, they have the most positive change from the previous weekend going into Seattle. Before the weekend, they were seventh in hard point, seventh in search, and tenth in domination. They stay seventh and tenth in both the respawns, but they go from seventh to fourth in their search and destroy. They took a negative differential and turned it into a nearly one round positive. Positive 0.61. That's a imp big improvement from where they were previously at negative 0.06, which is essentially dead even. So a good turnaround for the London Royal Ravens in their search and destroy. And with that, their respawn also saw a positive boost. The thing about London that I'm still not quite sold on is this new roster because it's just that. It's new. Are they in a honeymoon period? We saw Zero play extremely well this last weekend. It surprised me it kind of baffled me if I'm being completely honest with you and with that it turned into a very good mix again mostly in the search and destroy they only dropped one search and that was versus Los Angeles Gorillas on Piccadilly which was weird to see considering that London they've been playing a lot of Piccadilly this year Beyond that, though, they go even in the hard points, essentially three and four in the hard points, and they go even two and for two in the domination. Both of those big losses come to both Optic and Chicago. The 3 0 versus New York was very encouraging, and that was a lot of the reason why I bumped these guys up a little bit. They are not playing this upcoming weekend in Minnesota. Going to my next spot in the seventh position, I have Florida, a little bit of a hit here. And uh, this is weird because for me, you go back to their Florida homestand. Not good. They got 06 in the map count, although that said, four out of those six maps were tremendously close. But now you're going into a roster move where Awakening is expected to be starting this upcoming weekend, and you've got Chicago first, and you're not in a free group beyond that. Because like I mentioned, Toronto is looking good lately, and LAG is showing signs of improvement. So is there potential that Florida could be upset by any of those two squads? I think it's very reasonable that they very well could be. You take a look at their statistics, this is where they're going to have to be good. The respawn. We've talked about it time and time again. LAG, not a strong respawn team. Toronto, up until the previous weekend, not a strong uh, respawn team. This squad is still fifth in the hard point and the domination. So if you can continue to be good in respawn, you very well could just avoid having to do well in search and destroy. But here's the better news. You've got search and destroy here where you have been good on one map specifically. Piccadilly, you've been strong there. 2-0 with a pretty solid differential, most of that coming recently. I would love to see Florida go back there. The way they played the map was extremely well and obviously merited them a couple of wins versus teams like Chicago and Minnesota. If they can find ways to repeat that against Chicago again and decent search and destroy teams in the Toronto Ultra and the Los Angeles Gorillas, this Florida team very well could make some waves in what will be Group B. Let's drop over to the top six. It's still going to be a hit here as the Minnesota 
Rocker will take a two-point dip overall. Again, it was the Seattle homestand, not great for them. They did take the first game five versus Optic Gaming LA in a very back-and-forth affair where both Search and Destroys went to round 11. Then they got essentially, I won't say blowed out, but they got 0-3'd by Chicago. The only real blowout was in the domination there. But then they also lost 0-3 to Optic Gaming where the only map that was close was the Azir Cave hardpoint. Minnesota a little bit all over the place. You take a look at their differentials in total, third in hardpoint, ninth in search and destroy, and now seventh in domination. Every single one of their point differentials and ranks have taken a hit. They stay sixth overall and tenth overall in hardpoint and search, but their differentials got worse. Same th situation with what happened with their domination. They started in sixth last week. Now they're the seventh ranked team, and they were at a positive differential before. Now they're at a negative one in the domination. Minnesota, flat out, you have to be better at search and destroy. We've said this time and time again. Out of the four search maps that they played, three of them went to round 11. Two of them came up as L's, and then you got kind of smoked by Optic Gaming on Arklov Peak, a map that... To be fair, they have not played all that much this year, but still, you've got to be better at search and destroy, and you cannot lose ground in the respawn. I was mentioning this last time in our power rankings. I was nervous that a team like Minnesota and Florida could very well, very easily fall out of the top five, and for me, that has currently occurred. Going into my fifth spot overall, Optic Gaming LA. They've been impressive, and they're still going through a potential roster move. Haven't heard anything new about the whole gunless situation, but there was a trial account scrimming with them earlier on in this current week. So, will there be a move? We'll have to wait to see because they don't play this upcoming weekend, but Seattle was a kind of a mixed bag for them. Again, they dropped that first map five versus Minnesota Rocker. Then they take a 3-1 relatively easily versus the Paris Legion. Another solid 3-0 versus Minnesota, but then they drop the map five versus the London Royal Ravens where they actually don't pick up one of the two search and destroys. And that's where the search and destroy kind of uh, has been the beacon of success for a lot of these aspiring squads. And for Optic, they have been right there with it. During their time at Florida, they only dropped three of those search maps while also still doing very well in the respawn. That kind of took a little bit of a hit. They only went three for three in the search this last weekend, even though they still went three and one in the domination. Again, if you can't win search and destroy and you're essentially going one for one in hard points, which they did this previous weekend, that's the result to be expected. So it's a it's a very um, generous gift, I would say, to put Optic Gaming up two spots. But based on what I've seen from Florida and Minnesota, especially concerned that Florida's going through a roster change, I thought Optic, based on the results alone, merited to be breaking into the top five. Into my fourth spot. And what a spot this is. Because there was a conversation that I was in with a certain Discord group of people that... Uh, were you know out there I'm not going to say on this channel but they were looking at the picks very intently we'll say that much the New York Subliners was the worst team in all of their minds and I kept saying that with one good change this New York Subliners team could be incredible they have all of the pieces with really one exception and Mac has made this team incredible they have done very well in the respawn as of late yes they only went four and three in the hard point and two and two in the domination but a lot of those maps came down to the last and final moments, including a 151 to 154 Gunrunner Domination loss. We also had a couple of games that were 200 points plus versus the Huntsman that they lost in Hardpoint. The big thing for me in this New York team, kind of the same conversation I had about Optic, they have to get better at Search and Destroy, and they have to get better at Search and Destroy now if they want to stay in the top five. The 6-4 win versus the Seattle Surge was the only win that they had this last week, and everything else was a 3-6 loss to London, LA, and Chicago. That said, all three of those squads in the top echelon of search and destroying the CDL this year. So there is something to be said about that, but you have to improve if you're New York and you want to make more moves to get up the standings and, in my mind, up the rankings as you move forward. They also have an off weekend coming up this next weekend. Coming into my top three. There's going to be no switch up here for the Chicago Huntsman, even though they just won the last event. And here's my reasoning why. Yes, they played very well throughout the entirety of the weekend, but they still had a handful of close calls, including the four-game set versus the London Royal Ravens. Yeah, they took both hard points. Yeah, they took the domination. But reasonably, all the hard points were kind of up for grabs, to be completely candid. And on top of that, it was a one-point domination. That set very well could have gone the distance. 
Beyond that, when they played up against teams like Paris, Minnesota, and New York, there were only maybe one map in each of those series that were definitively blowouts in favor of Chicago. Yes, they're still going through this little bit of a roster swap. Pristini, as he went on through the weekend, looked more comfortable with Chicago. He was trusting his teammates. He wasn't taking over-aggressive peaks like he kind of was a little bit with Florida, and especially at the beginning of the weekend here with Chicago. But until I see that growth go a little bit further, I have a hard time putting Chicago in the top two, even though their stat lines are first in hard points, second in search, second in domination. It's all relatively equivalent to what we've seen from both Dallas and Atlanta. And speaking of, in my second place, the Dallas Empire, not moving again from where they were previously. This is going to be a telling weekend because Atlanta, Dallas, Chicago, Minnesota, all of which are in the action this weekend. And for Dallas and Atlanta, they find themselves in the same group again. And for Dallas, you play Minnesota first. And you've only gone one for one with Minnesota, and both series were very tight. So Minnesota very well could be the potential kryptonite of a team like Dallas Empire. You take a look at their stats, fourth and hard point, third and search, fourth and domination, all of which have been going up and up and up since we moved online. Say about that what you will. First place position, Atlanta phase. Hard for me to say otherwise right now. Technically, they sit second in my rankings, but their point differential and hard point is, uh, is, is astounding. It's insane. They win on average at a 30-point margin. Chicago was at 13.5 point differential. That's more than double that Atlanta Fays are putting up when it comes to hard point differentials in total. The thing that's different is the win-loss ratio, which Chicago has a narrow lead in. So, going through this weekend, it's very possible to think that if Atlanta still plays consistent, they have Seattle first, should be an easy trip for them. That, in its own right, will put them back to first in the rankings just by how I'm doing my statistics. So, We'll just go ahead and say first across the board for Atlanta, rightfully so. These guys are insane. And again, we will be doing a full breakdown predictions of the weekend coming up before we get into it. And beyond that, make sure you follow along at our Twitch channel because after the action is done, instead of just doing little 10-minute videos that we're posting on as far as recaps for the YouTube, we'll be streaming a ESPN-style post show on our Twitch that will also then be uploaded immediately afterwards to our YouTube. So make sure you check all that out, twitch.tv slash CMG underscore esports. We hope to catch you guys there immediately after the action unfolds on the COD League YouTube. That's going to do it for our rankings. Let me know what you think down below. Make sure if you like the video, you go down and you like the video. And beyond that, make sure you subscribe on your way out. Hit the notification bell to get notifications on when videos get posted live. Till the next time, hope you guys keep holding it down. So long.